Well, thank you very much, and I, I uh, have to follow that roots and wings, but it kind of fits into what I'm going to talk about. Roots and wings, I'm talking about unmanned aircraft, UAS, applications to agriculture. And really, it does connect roots and wings, and it connects the communities here that we're in in Grand Forks and the Fargo that I'm from and all of North Dakota. Um, this community really has a, has a proud heritage and accomplishments in wings. You know, they have the John D. Odegaard School of, of Aerospace at the University of North Dakota. We have the Grand Forks Air Base. And now you have a center of excellence, a UAS center of excellence at, connected with the Aerospace School that works closely with the Northern Plains unmanned aircraft test site. So they're all connected here in, in this community. And I'm from uh, North Dakota State University down the road in Fargo. And we have a proud tradition, a long tradition, of serving the people of North Dakota with agriculture. And really, what the UAZ, UAVs have that opportunity to connect roots and wings, to connect our air to agriculture. Uh, and, and really, you know, I, I want to focus on how unmanned aircraft can possibly fit into agriculture. And it really has to focus into helping, as, as previous speakers have talked about, feeding the world. Uh, you know, it wasn't very long ago, uh, less than a little over 100 years ago, that there were one billion people on Earth. But when I was born, which is before most of you, there were only two and a half billion people on Earth. And in my lifetime, I've seen the world population triple. And really, no one else has seen the world population double in their own lifetime except you and I. No other people who've ever lived on Earth since the beginning of humanity have lived long enough to see the world population double. But we've all seen it double in our lifetime. And not only that, we have seen the world's, pop, uh, the world's acreage for farming decrease. We lose about a million acres of farmland every year. So we have to continue to feed the world, and we need to you have to feed the world with fewer and fewer acres. And my, my thought is, you know, what's the possible future for, for unmanned, agri unmanned aircraft in agriculture? To me, it has to fit into an area that I work in and have worked in for a long time is precision agriculture. And precision ag, really, in, in both crops and livestock, is continually developing. And today's farmers, when they get into a tractor or into a combine or into a sprayer, the first thing they do is interact with a computer. And it's used for guidance, it's used for yield mapping, it's used for you know, where, to, where to apply what kind of uh, uh, information. It, in, in the end, if we can't get what we're getting from unmanned aircraft to fit into this precision ag, there probably doesn't have a future for it. And really, we are at the beginning, kind of the cusp of a big data in agriculture, where everything is connected and where all the data that's collected, not just on one farmer's farm, but all the farms in the area, in the region, in the state, and beyond, are going in to knowing what to plant in what area. So the farmers are using this, they're, they're transferring information back and forth in real time. So it's using wireless networks and cellular networks, and there's a computer in every piece of equipment and in, in a, a computer you know, in, in, each, um, in, 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 in the office. And telematics, we call this, con this exchange of information telematics, allows the farm manager to see what's going on all the time. He can tell, for example, if the combine is operating correctly, the, the uh, technician at the implement dealer can tell you know, is that tractor operating correctly? Does it need a new filter? Is there something wrong with it? So in order to make that, in order for uh, unmanned aircraft to fit into and have a, have a uh, contribution to agriculture, it has to fit in to that kind of, of uh, precision technology. And the reason, the, the hope that we can have of making, of having unmanned aircraft make a contribution to this is to try to be more precise. We need to be able to put the exact amount of fertilizer, the, exact, the right kind of seed, the right pesticides in the right place. And there's great variability across fields, and we need to focus on that. We need to make sure that we're maximizing the yield all across each part of the field. And really, the most 
important thing from a farmer's point of view is this allows them not only to, to, uh, to be more efficient and to reduce the amount of inputs and to protect the environment, but it also allows them to maximize yields, to get the highest possible yields. And if you look across farmers in North Dakota and across, those farmers that are most profitable are those that have the highest yields. So hopefully we can do that in this area of using drones in agriculture. Now I'd like to go through just half a dozen specific applications that we're working on. And again, this is a collaborative effort with, with the folks here in Grand Forks at the University of North Dakota at the, at the UAS test site and, and with the people at, at NDSU, our agricultural scientists. But there are a number of things. And the first thing that we've been able to do is to be able to fly an aircraft, a small UAV, over a field and have it count crops, count seeds or count uh, plants coming out of the ground. And just the way that works, the way that may be valuable to farmers, is a farmer, for example, on corn plants, say, 35,000 seeds per acre. And they're hoping that, you know, 35,000 seeds germinate and become plants and then produce cobs of corn and they can harvest it. But the, from the time the corn comes out of the ground until the farmer pulls the combine in to harvest it, he spends about $100 an acre. So hopefully, being able to fly over a field and say, you know, this section of your field, instead of having 35,000 plants coming up a week after it's planted, only has 10,000, they would manage that differently. Maybe go in and replant it, or maybe put it to a different crop, but anyway, get the most possible use out of that part of the field. Uh, another area that we've been successful at and hope to do, continue to do at, is to do fertility management. Be able to fly over a field and show where there's a deficient amount of nitrogen, where there's enough nitrogen, where some has to be added during the season. And uh, this slide just shows that at our work at the Carrington Research Site, we've been able to do, to be able to predict, predict yield when corn is only like a foot high. So, that, and if you can predict yield, that's something valuable for the farmer to manage his crop and to manage his economics. Another one, and maybe this is, uh, has, has the greatest potential, in agriculture today, most farmers are using genetically modified corn, genetically modified sugar beet, genetically modified uh, sunflowers and canola and, and the soybeans, but weeds are starting to develop resistance to that. And one of the things that we've been able to do with our thermal cameras on UAVs is to identify herbicide resistant weeds, and what we're doing is flying over, you know, we'll, we'll, we've started in the greenhouse. You take herbicide resistant weeds, seeds, and herbicide susceptible ones, and those that are, and then we apply like Roundup or a chemical to it. And if you come back about 10 hours later with a thermal camera, and those weeds that are susceptible to the pesticides are starting to die and wilt, and the sun shines on them, and they have a higher canopy temperature because there's not enough water in their cell for them to, to cool. Those that are resistant, the sun shines on them, they have the right amount of water in their cells, or they have a lower canopy temperature. So we are able to fly over a field and say this is where you have herbicide resistant weeds, now you have to go out and do something to that. So we see that as something that, that farmers would be willing to pay for. Another thing is um, identifying crop diseases, and we're looking at specific diseases in different crops. Again, being able to just find the location where those seeds are, where those diseases are, and apply the fungicide or in the case of, a, of an insect infestation, an insecticide, just where it's needed and not over the whole field. Another application that, that we're working with is using UAVs to just count animals. Being able, you know, each animal is worth two or three thousand dollars, and if you've got 500 of them out in a pasture that's, say, five miles square, it takes a long time to go out there and inventory them. So if you can fly over it and let the computer count them, again, something that's valuable. Another application is using thermal sensors, thermal cameras, to identify animals with fevers. In this picture, uh, the cooler, the whiter, the, the lighter the color, the, the warmer the temperature, and the darker the color, the cooler the temperature. So our objective here is to fly over a, a, herd, a, feed, a herd lot, say a feedlot of cattle, and pick out those animals that have a raised body temperature that are maybe getting sick before you can walk through them and identify the animals that are getting sick. They're not eating right or they're not standing right or they're not walking right. And the same is true with, with um, female animals for artificial insemination. If you could fly over a herd, pick out those animals that are in, in the estrus cycle and you'd pull those out for artificial insemination. Uh, animals 
before birthing, about 36 hours before birthing, before calving, if it's, a, if it's a cow, the body temperature goes up a couple of degrees. So again, you fly over it, pick out those animals that have a raised temperature and pull them out for calving. So I think there's, so those are some of the things that we're looking at. And I think too that, that, that we need to look at in terms of what's the future for, for unmanned aircraft or drones in, in agriculture. I think there's an application for small ones and there's an application for big ones. Um, large uh, UAVs have, have, have one use, small UAVs another. And I think as, as the FAA regulations allows this in commercial applications and beyond line of sight, small UAVs will be very common on farms. And they'll use that for scouting and real-time feedback to their, to their cell phone or to their tablet. And they'll use that to locate areas, whether it's on uh, you know, problem areas in fields or you know, looking at animals. But if you're going to fly a large area, I think we need a large UAV. And one of the applications that we're working on this year, actually flying out of the Hillsborough Airport, is a large UAV that's, that's got like a 35-foot wingspan. It can fly for 18 hours at a time. We'll fly, it'll collect uh, imagery of one-inch pixel size on the ground of, say, 50,000 acres in one hour. So that will change so you could fly large areas, fly the whole Red River Valley, store that imagery in the cloud, and let farmers clip out what they need. So that, I think, is, is, is there's, there'll be room for both small and large. And I guess, you know, as I, as I think about using unmanned aircraft in agriculture, we, we still have a ways to go in terms of making sure that, it's, that there's a good return on investment. But I, I think it's so easy to think, about, to think in the past or even think in the present and hard to think in the future. But I think this is an opportunity for us, you know, to not just just uh, you know, feed the seven billion of us who are on Earth now, but to feed you know, the potential to use this to increase production on the land that we have left and to feed the eight to nine billion people that are coming forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm.